this is Valerie Aiello, and you are listening to Idea Diary. Thanks for coming back to my office and hanging out. So today, I wanted to talk about a little aha moment that I had. So I'm really big on starting the day with waking up and immediately going to a piece of paper, immediately writing down kind of my morning hypnagogic state thoughts, because I do have some of my greatest ideas the moment or that time between asleep and awake in the morning for me when I'm waking up and I'm trying to capture that nighttime hypnagogic state power for when I'm falling asleep. But that's a little bit hard for me because I do love falling asleep to a show. If I have just silence, I will not fall asleep. I will just think and think and think forever. So having that background noise that kind of takes me off of my own brain and puts me into probably a a beta state of some kind similar when you turn on the news and you're automatically hypnotized by the television and the sounds and the flickering I don't know if you've noticed but psychology and psychologists and marketing people have known this for years that the tv definitely puts you in a hypnotic state so I guess maybe that's similar when I'm putting on a podcast or YouTube video or something and I'm putting that on to kind of take my brain off of my own mind and just kind of slowly fall asleep thinking about something else. You know, I'm not sure how healthy or unhealthy that is. Maybe someone out there knows and can enlighten me. But I am trying to, before I put on that show, to calmly fall asleep to. I am trying to use that hypnagogic state time to do my my nightly to-do list for the morning. So I just feel like I'm capturing that nighttime sleep where I'm always thinking about dreams, always thinking about goals. And really in that nighttime moment, I'm focusing on like a big goal, like something that feels impossible. I'm kind of laying that on my subconscious mind to believe that it's possible because I do believe magic can happen and things that you would never thought to be possible do happen. I have too many experiences of of just dream life experiences unfolding and becoming a reality and becoming reachable that I know can happen and positive thinking I feel like is the number one tool that can get you there. Along with fate, I never discount fate because I feel like fate does exist. And maybe just taking a step back and kind of going with the flow and realizing that faith does exist and that might be an element and you really shouldn't throw a fit when things aren't going your way or give up. You know, I don't have proof that faith exists, but it does help me personally thinking about like, oh, well, well, maybe I wasn't getting exactly what I want. And when things unfold later, when you have that 2020 hindsight experience of, oh, I can see maybe that awful thing happened because of this unfolded and then this unfolded and then this unfolded to get me to this magical place. So I do really try to just go with flow while I'm working every day for my dreams. And the aha moment that I had is really when I talk about to-do list and doing my to-do list in the morning and kind of listing out my, my mega dreams or my my ultimate life goals and kind of keeping it readily available for me to see every day and rewriting that with my handwriting, with a pen, with a paper. I feel like writing things down, whether it's just multiplying the efforts, I'm not sure. But for me, it really does feel good to get a pen, get a paper and write things down. So anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. My big aha moment that I've realized is that my to-do lists are actually not to-do lists. They are little templates. So I have my morning template. I have my list of things that I really need to achieve in the morning for me to feel like I've had the most successful day possible or just to feel proud of myself and feel like I'm inching towards my ultimate existence, my ultimate happiness that I'm kind of getting to live out all my hopes and dreams, all the things. So I definitely have my morning template down. And that doesn't mean I stick to it every day. It doesn't mean that I don't have my laying in bed days. It doesn't mean that I don't get sidetracked by having to go run somewhere in the morning, you know, do someone a favor or something like that. 
And my morning template isn't about like, oh, I'm a constant vacation because that's not me. I don't want to be on constant vacation. I already feel like, I kind of feel like I don't need a vacation because my happiness lies in having a laptop, having a camera, working on something, having a paintbrush, forcing myself to make 10 paintings. You know, I'm a doer. Not that people that need that like beach lifestyle laptop working four hours a week lifestyle. Not that they aren't doers. I feel like maybe their brain needs different ways to use their creativity. Or maybe they're thinking of their fun times as actually not work because it's so fun. Where somebody that might have to do that would think, oh, that's that's totally work. I would never do that. The point is, is that everyone's different. And I do feel like if you template out your your life template, your daily template, And I break it down in chunks of like, this is what I want to achieve in the morning. This is what I want to achieve in the afternoon. I'm starting to, my mornings have been so successful and I'm I'm getting things done and I'm getting closer to something, you know, somewhat of a goal that I'm, I'm reaching for that now I'm ready to add to it. And I'm about to add my afternoon template. And then I feel like, okay, once my morning's going well and my afternoon's going well and I'm getting things done and it's exciting for me, then I might add a nighttime thing or I just might be fine with like, I achieve stuff in the morning and the afternoon and at night I just do whatever I want. Also like nighttime just to maybe be there with friends. A lot of my friends like to happy hour. So when they're hanging out and having drinks, it's more of that like five o'clock party time thing. and. For me, I really don't like to have drinks that early. I'd rather start having drinks at 9, 10 o'clock at night and then go late. But that's me. I'm just, I'm a night owl. I like to get as much done in the day as I can and then take a breather. But really, in my younger days, I feel like I used to have to go out three times a week, minimum. You know, have a Friday, Saturday night, a Friday night, a Saturday night, a work day, party night. Uh, but now... Not so much. I'm definitely one good hangout every two weeks. I'm I'm pretty good with that. And really, I'm not a glass of wine at the end of the night kind of person. I'm more like I need to save up my party energy for like one night of just super blowout, have fun party. Anyway, I guess that's the show for today. The main thing is to-do list maybe is not the right word. I finally figured out the right word. I'm going with life template at the moment. I've still got to figure it out. It's definitely like creating a template of if I did this every single day, I would feel amazing. And you might have a normal workday version of that. You might have a travel version of that. And you might have a vacation version of that. You could have different templates. But for me, I don't go anywhere. I don't do very much. So the vacation thing during all that's happening is just like totally off my plate. I don't need I'm kind of fine not traveling at the moment. So it just, for me, it's what is that dream day here in my house, here in my office, here in, here in my creation space that is morning, noon, and night, just, just waiting for me to sit in it and start making stuff. All right. So that's the, um, that's the show for today. This show is brought to you by the song of the day of which I choose. I have chosen a Culture Club song called The War Song, and it's a song that I had never really heard until I listened to this full album, front to back, and I did watch some Boy George documentaries just to learn a little bit more about Boy George, and the one thing I did learn about Boy George is that he is that he never really had like a struggle. He had great parents that believed in him, and he was, he was kind of gay as a child or they would call it a puff in England you know his parents kind of at an early age just accepted that he was maybe that he was maybe a little bit different and embraced him and he seems to have a really great family and he did get into drugs for a while but he was able to have a support system to kind of pull him out of that he didn't have this huge drive to be like this mega rock star. It kind of just happened for their band. And he was really happy that everyone loved him. But he was fine with kind of being like a just kind of being an alternative artist for alternative people to like him. It never was like this. I need to be an icon of all time. And he just seems very laid back and things. He's very much himself. And he doesn't hide himself. He's, he says that he's not really into 
keeping secrets. So it was really hard for him not to just tell the media that he was gay. But he was dating his drummer who was who had dated women before him. So it wasn't he was trying to be respectful for his drummer and not like just come out with their relationship. Yeah, boy, George just seems like a really nice, happy dude. And I think that even though he had his like rock star moments that were kind of bad, you know, but it was the drugs and things took him in a direction to be a little bit destructive or maybe a lot destructive, but he he brought it back and and he was able to capture his like happy soul and just kind of be himself and have fun. Anyways, that's the show for today and I'll see you later. Bye.